our favorite son is back home here in Winnipeg, Darcy Oak. And Darcy, I have to ask you a question. Wait, now. I'm, am I your son? Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> Winnipeg's son, our oh, okay, favorite okay, son. Okay, gotcha. okay, all right. Oh, nah, yeah, you know, everybody here in Winnipeg, you're our son, so to speak. Oh, okay, okay. But I have a question for you now. Is it magic is life or life is magic for you? Both, yeah, they're one and the same thing. It's like I've turned uh, magic and that performance art into my life, but before that, and even now to this day, it's I eat, sleep, breathe it every day. That's that's what I do. And if uh, if I wasn't, you know, actively working right now, I would be, you know, trying to carve out a way in this field. And and to me, that's happiness. Wow. Okay. So we've seen your journey, which uh, seems like a magic carpet ride, so to speak. But now you're at a point, Darcy. What is it like for you? when you have people in the palm of your hand <laughs> and it's you. Yeah, well, I mean, the game sort of changed for me uh, three years ago. Like when I went and did Britain's Got Talent, those videos went around and um, sort of completely changed the game. So before that, the, I was basically just being put in front of people mm -hmm. to perform and, and nobody was there to actually see me. It would be like, you know, a dinner or something like, oh, let's watch The Magician. But since Britain's Got Talent, the game sort of changed where people are, are actually coming to see me. And that's, you know, that's the ultimate goal, I think, of any entertainer is to be able to put a show up for sale and have people come and buy tickets because they're fans or they want to see it. So, um, and, and magic is an art form that doesn't exist unless mm -hmm. people see it. So it's, um, it's been quite the journey. Well, and now the learning curve, I mean, the things that you've learned along the way, I mean, the experiences, but also you have to keep on going. Is there... There's no stopping, is there, really? No, not at all. It's, it's a never-ending process of creating, performing, tweaking. Um, and magic is, is an art that sort of exists in the, in the details and the, and the finesse of it. Um, so it's, it's every little thing needs to be sort of worked on or, or thought about or touched on. And it's, there, there's so many elements that go into creating something because, you know, we live in a, in a culture where literally you can go on Google and it'll tell you what you're searching for before you're even done typing. So there are no questions anymore. It's like you want to know the answer to something, go to Google, there it is. So um, I've always tried to sort of bring that experience back and, you know, and have people sit there and see something firsthand with their own eyes that they can't explain, that they can't go on Google and go figure out. And that's, that's staying ahead of the curve and constantly working and trying to pr push the crash forward. Okay, so the last one, I watched it, the one that you did in England on New Year's Day. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so last time we did a show in Winnipeg, that's what we closed yeah. the show with, and we tried to add an element to make it special, and it almost went haywire. It, like, it almost, it, it, basically, it's an endurance stunt where I've been training to hold my breath for extended right. periods of time. Uh, we did it in Winnipeg. It almost went wrong, but watching the video footage, I was like, oh, this is intense. The uh, people from the UK at the New Year's Day parade, saw that and were like, you have to come and close the parade with this, did that. And then from that, that sort of kind of brought my name back into mm -hmm. the press in the UK. And then from there, I got to do the Queen's 90th birthday. Right. So it was uh, just looking back at sort of my career and my journey and to see like, well, if I didn't do this show, this person wouldn't have seen me. And if they didn't see me, I wouldn't have done this. It's just, it's, it's crazy to look at. It's, it's surreal, but it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, if I was able to carve out a career by doing magic like that sounds you know kind of ridiculous but literally like it, it's something that i was passionate about and always had that mindset where if i think it's cool someone else is going to think it's cool and i just never looked back how do you get over the fear like you just said in winnipeg it almost mm -hmm. went haywire yeah and i mean when you see this it, it, it what is it darcy is it is it a rush like, is that exhilaration <laughs> when it does work um, wow. but the fear when you're in it it yeah. may not well, that's key, I feel like. And if you get over that fear, then it's not really scary for the audience. So, mm -hmm. like, if I'm about to do this stunt and I'm literally like, oh, my God, I hope this works, the audience can feel that. And the second that emotion goes away, then it just becomes this fabricated stunt that they know is probably maybe fake or whatever. But if I'm literally like, oh, my God. It's like you, you can tell when you see someone on stage, like, if they're nervous, mm -hmm. if they're bombing, if whatever. The, all the emotions from stage are just accentuated and the audience can feel them. So if I'm sitting there comfortable about to risk my life, then it's, then it's obviously not real. So we've, we've been adamant on making sure that that piece is not rigged or gimmicked. It's actually an endurance stunt. What you see is what you get. And the fact that it did almost go wrong in Winnipeg was like, just proves that. Wow, okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna talk about another special person. Mm -hmm. Your brother, yeah. Bruce. And uh, you know, the reason why you're back here in Winnipeg 
three shows, you know, you feel the love, you know that, mm -hmm. you know, you are our favorite son. But, <laughs> um, the story goes much beyond yourself. Yeah, well, this, is, uh, this, this isn't just about me coming and putting on a show and look at me and look what I've been doing. It's, it's more than that. And um, six years ago, my older brother passed away from a drug overdose. And it's something that my family and I have been extremely open about. Um, just because of the stigma that's associated with addiction, people don't like to talk about it. Um, and essentially, he, he struggled with addiction for the better part of his adult life. And the happiest he was was when he was in this long-term treatment facility. It was in Calgary, actually. And it's not like a 45-day traditional sort of treatment center where you're in, you're out, and you try to figure it out after. It's, there's, you can stay there for however long you need to um, to get clean and to feel comfortable integrating back into everyday society with that support group. And Winnipeg doesn't have a facility like this. So um, the whole purpose of these shows is to raise money, um, you know, give people an evening of entertainment while at the same time raising money to open a facility like that in the city. Wow. So I know your brother's so proud of you. I know that he sees every move you uh, do. On it, well, yeah, I know. I yeah. feel like he would be, he would be proud of the career-wise, but I also feel like deep down, just we're, we're one in the same, like we have the yeah. exact same personality, and I know deep down he would probably be pissed that I'm like just <laughs> openly sharing his story, <laughs> but I, he would understand the purpose of it, and, and it needs to be done, so. Yeah, and through this all, Darcy, you know, I guess life lessons, mm -hmm. what have you learned, and I know, like, how do you apply it to the Darcy Oak today? It's don't sweat the small stuff, you know, it's priorities and family and it's like before I went through that, you know, having my brother pass away, it was like, I was rather looking back on that, it was like nothing is as bad as that. So you can't, like little things that happen, it's like, oh, not really a big deal. And, and you can sort of pick your battles in that way and I feel like I'm much more calm and collected person just because when you go through literally the worst experience, what else can be as bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's sort of, I've kind of integrated that into just me as a person as well as me on stage. And, um, you know, it's, the, it's the, the attitude, the performance style, the whole thing, it kind of all comes from your life experiences. And it, it's who you are as a person, it's just accentuated on stage. And I think that character, um, you know, only develops from going through life experiences like that and you know I've, I've tried to find the good in it as opposed to you know being angry about it learn from it uh, try to help others from this experience which is you know what we're doing with these shows and and just just be a better person because of it well well you've done well with magic and uh maybe you found the answer to the magic of life too darcy no, i don't know about that <laughs> so I'm, I'm not jesus right I, here. I, I, i'm just waiting for the dove to come out yeah right just wait just All wait right. okay thanks so much darcy. thanks for having me